asked me if I'd just, uh, just talk for two minutes on a video about the nature of uh, living educational theory. And what I said that I'd do is just focus on what it is that uh, excites me about individuals creating their own living theories. And it's because, first of all, I enjoy the life stories of people. I enjoy listening um, as they explain why they're doing what they are doing. And yet when I was studying um, educational theory at the University of London Institute of Education, the theories that were given actually eliminated um, the practical principles that individuals use to explain their own lives. And what I decided to do, I decided to leave teaching in schools and come to the University of Bath, I was lucky to get a post there in 1973, to see if I could help to create a very different kind of educational theory that really included the explanations that individuals gave for why they do what they do. And with people that I talk with, I notice the expression of a tremendous law of energy that I, I just refer to as a life-affirming energy. And this energy is often linked to the values that they feel passionate about. And those values can relate to freedom and compassion, justice and fairness. But it's those kind of embodied values that seem to give meaning and purpose to the lives of individuals. And so what I did was I coined this idea of a living theory, and in particular a living educational theory, for the explanations that individuals produce for their own educational influences in their own learning and the learning of others, and also in the learning of the social formations in which they live and work. Because although I'd done quite a lot of work with individuals in classrooms about improving their learning, I was really uh, very aware that educators, their primary purpose is to help their pupils to improve their learning. So I wanted explanations that individuals produced to show that they could explain their influence in the learning of others. And the third point came later because it was pointed out to me by this um, researcher called Susan Nofkin in about 1995 that to create a living educational theory was important, but it wasn't sufficient if you wanted to influence the social formations or the cultures within which we live and work. So I put the third element of a living theory into the idea that uh, the living theory and an individual's living theory should have those three components. Not separate, they're all related, but the individual should be able to communicate this explanation, grounded in their values, which are embodied and expressed in practice, that can explain why they do what they do, but also to explain the educational influences they're having in their own learning, in the learning of others, and in the learning of the social formation in which they live and work.